So I'm Lori Fazelli, and I am in um, the Dynamic CRM organization and uh, was asked to come and moderate the panel. So the two folks that you haven't met yet are Nancy Holliday and Karen Leonard. Um, Nancy's with the uh, services sales team and Karen's with the Xbox team. Um, so I prepared some questions. I, I was a little surprised that you were going to be here. So, And actually the first one, Lisa, is actually perfect for you. I was going to throw it out to the whole team. but. Um, so our new CEO, Satya Nadella, has made several organizational changes so that we can focus on what makes Microsoft truly unique. What would you say we're doing as a company to thrive in a mobile-first and cloud-first world? So I think the, uh, the green, there we go, green light's on. Um, I think most importantly with Satya's tenure, uh, one of the things he said is we have to really get back to focusing on the customer. So before we decide the device, before we decide what's going to be on the device or how people are going to get information, we have to get back to being super customer driven and really understanding what people want to use. I mean, we can say mobile first, but if the world isn't with us, we could mean two very different things. So first, his real, he has really impressed upon us the need to truly understand what customers care about and what they want to do. Then to really figure out how we take the amazing assets we have and apply them correctly. We sort of come from a world, and I know if you're in an engineering organization, um, you've experienced this at some point, where engineers in particular ex know exactly what the customer wants, even though they've never spoken to a customer in their lives. Th that is a, um, in a world where you're really brand new in technology and there's not a lot of things out there, you can tell the user what they need because they just don't know. Our users know. <laughs> and we need to listen better. And that's one of the things that Satya has really impressed upon us. That will lead to mobile first, that will lead to cloud first, but really we have to understand the customer. Yeah, and of course I love that because I'm in the customer relationship management team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Julie, if you ask me, I think you've got one of the coolest geek jobs, um, especially at such an exciting time in the industry like we were talking about earlier about how everything is moving so quickly. Um, so what are you most excited about uh, the role, uh, about how Microsoft is helping um, people transform how we connect work and play. Sure, I think some of it goes follows on to what Lisa was saying. It was, we have an incredible opportunity because we now, we have a set of services that are widely used. We have Skype, we have Outlook.com, we have OneDrive. We have all these services in the cloud to build on and we have customers that are using those things. We have Office 365, so we have the cloud. And we also have the software that lives on the device. We have an ability to connect the cloud services with cross-device software in a, in a different way across mobile, across you know, wearables, across tablets, across PCs, across all the different things you might use in your life and things you maybe you haven't thought of yet. And we're making devices. So we can make devices that complement the cloud services, the, the operating system software and applications. You know, we have the customers there as well with all with office you just can't replace you know using excel with anything else today and so we have a set of people that we can really work with to move into a new world with a set of technologies that complete the whole stack the hardware software and the services and my, it's exciting for me in my new role to be able to help bridge and bring together a new way of working across those things to take those assets that Lisa was talking about and help the company transform into a more customer-centric, mobile-centric way of working. Thanks. And then, Nancy, how are we actually taking that technology and getting it implemented out, out there? Uh, well, we do that through Microsoft services as well as partners. Um, we have fantastic partners that help deploy the software out to our customers as well as our Microsoft services team, which is both consulting and support. And, you know, I, I'm amazed every day what we're doing for our customers, and it's just um, a delight to be part of the organization. I means just a few examples, you know, we started a project five years ago with the New York Police Department where, you know, now you go down to New York and you go into the police department, there's the crime center and there's a, you know, big wall and every 911 call, you have big maps showing, you have, it's just all right there. And you know, that took us a couple years to create and now we're doing it for um, the P DC police. And so Chief Lanier, an awesome female, <laughs> Chief of Police of DC, um, she's, she's the exec sponsor and we meet with her and so we're doing it for, for them. As well as there's so many others. Um, you know, I love what we're doing in devices. You know, the Delta in the cockpit of Delta Airlines, there is an app that shows weather turbulence for the um, pilots. 
There is visiting nurses, the biggest home home provider for home care. You know, they're using the Nokia phones to take pictures to upload them, so that we provide better care. There's um, God, this is one, one example after another, but what I love is the, is the ability to go in there and make a big impact and really use all the different products to create really complex solutions so our, really help our customers be more productive, give the information they need. And it's incredible to work with one you know, large client after another and walk in, here's my problem, you know, we've got this great technology, we need to pull it all together and really provide tremendous value to our customers. You know, Duval school systems, you know, they all have Windows 8 apps now where the teachers are using it, the kids are using it, the parents are using it. So just, you know, it's amazing what we can do with our technology. And I just think how much my life has changed and looking at my 401k and all my Windows 8 app, et cetera. So that's what, when, that's what we're doing in Microsoft Services. I'm incredibly proud of it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um it was a shock to me because so I've only been with Microsoft for a year and it was the um, amount of penetration that Microsoft has in the marketplace and what we're doing to make it a, a better place to be in um, has been incredibly impressive. Uh, which brings me to you, Karen, because I think uh, we both have some pretty cool products that we work on. Uh, you working in Xbox. What would you say is the coolest thing about Xbox that nobody knows about or not many people know about? <laughs> Well, first of all, we all get free Xboxes and games, and that's a great perk for me on the team. And we get to beta test new hardware and, and software, so those are really fun. But what people may not know is how complex the hardware is. And you can really see that when you get to the manufacturing line. There's over 2,000 components that come together to make an Xbox, and almost 1,000 that come together to make a Kinect. And when we're in a full capacity production, there's an Xbox coming off the line every second. It's just, so to all the people that have to bring that all together, it's just, um, it's, it's, you know, I'm proud to be part of that mm -hmm. and, and uh, just to see that it's, it takes a team, a huge team to bring it together. The other thing people may not know is we are constantly redesigning the Xbox to keep up with the advancements in technology. So it looks the same to customers and performs the same, but inside is different. Um, over the course of the generation, there could be you know, seven to 10 different designs on the inside that look drastically different from each other. Um, so that keeps our job interesting uh, and, and, and fun. Karen, I know something else they don't know, that the one that you got is white. Oh, it's beautiful, yes. Yeah. Special. <laughs> it says, I made this on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also just uh, some of the things that are beyond gaming, too, that uh, X Xbox being, you can run CRM on it. <laughs> CRM for me, it's it's the one thing a lot of people don't know about Microsoft. I think, but it's gaining a lot of Skype traction. Skype on your again. Xbox is amazing. Yeah, I, it's, you can have a real family conversation. I mean, it's on the big screen. Right? Mm -hmm. It's right there. Yeah, and you can uh, you can actually do some cool scenarios where you're Skyping and doing something, and they're right there present. You can play games. I mean, it's really interesting. Right, and in healthcare too, being able to use Connect to understand how, um, you know, people that may have ambulatory problems, how better to design, uh, you know, limbs for them, or you know, how to, how to. It's just, you know, way beyond just you know having fun playing a game. <laughs> I think it's, the one thing really that neat. really surprised me was, I ran in for a meeting. They had the Xbox all set up, and we were doing a demo of Xbox Fitness. I stood in front of it and it had my, put my heartbeat, mm -hmm. Connect knew my heartbeat just by looking at me. And somebody said, did you run here? And I'm like, no, I'm just kind of stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the rest of the questions that I have are pretty much open for anyone to answer. Um, can you share more uh, about some of the innovative ways that Microsoft invests in you, especially as a woman in technology? Anyone want to? I'll, I'll start first. it, sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously from the HR side, we spend a lot of time in training and development. That's not a um, gender specific thing, it's mm -hmm. something that we do. There are different uh, pi pilot programs that crop up based on interest that people have in different communities. So if there's a particular thing, negotiation is a skill that we often are asked for from women. So we'll do pilot programs, we'll bring them around the world, we'll do various things depending on cultures and what, what women are looking for and where they feel like they need support. So there's always training and development opportunities. Um, you know, we have great benefits for women who uh, have kids, 
men and women who have kids, paternity and maternity leave, good support, great health care support. So I think um, the last thing I'd say is we have a very robust women's community at Microsoft. Um, we, every other year, and we have to run it every other year because it's so well attended, honestly, we can't really afford to run it every single year. Um, but every other year we run a global women's conference, and we typically get five to 6,000 women attending the conference, either virtually or at the conference. And that's really a place to learn, to network, to grow, and for us to get information on how better to invest in the, the women's community as well. So that's really where our ideas come from. We don't kind of make them up because we think about it. We really bring women together, we listen to their voices, and we try to figure out where to invest in the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the off years, I think, uh, and I'm not sure if it's, am I still on? Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Um, there we go. Uh, we do them locally. So Karen and I just worked on one um, that we did last month that was here that's also uh, biannual as well. So it, you yeah. know, even if you can't go to the global one, um, we We have to lots of programs. I just participated in one this morning in the San Francisco office, um, and so called Wired for Success, and that's one that we're doing every month where we have more, I mean, hundreds of people that just like this event that want to come that can't come so increasing the number of those that we're doing and it's a network and leadership event uh, we have diversity sponsors on every team i just uh, accepted the diversity executive sponsorship for my division and um, going into my new role been in two weeks and uh and so we you know have lots of luncheons i did a luncheon last week with some women from the xbox team just to talk about you know things and hear stories and and see what we can do to help each other to be more successful so it's there's a lot there's a very active women's group I, I think overall it's just a tone that anything's possible right. bring an idea and we'll be supported mm -hmm. and that's the way I feel I mean their their programs are great and we have you know hypo programs and all the things that but what I like is just the openness you know, and then also like we really encourage it with our customers too. We we have a um, I love it. We have the East uh, CIO Summit every year where only female CIOs come, and we we get to meet with them. And it's amazing, you know, what our customers our customers go through the same challenges we do as women. And we all sit around, we talk, and it is a huge event. And again, we try to keep that small because we want it intimate. So we try to keep it to hundred people, but we have tons of customers that want to come. So I think it really is an overall tone that anything's possible, bring up an idea, bring it to your manager, and they'll probably be supported. And it's awesome to be in a company that feels that way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, what would you say are the challenges that Microsoft faces where we need bright, innovative geek girls to help overcome them? So um, first and foremost, we need innovation. We need people who are willing to think differently about the way people use technology, gather information, interact with devices. We just really challenge us to think differently. The good or the bad part about Microsoft is we work at extraordinary scale. 130,000 people, billions of customers, global, many, many countries. So you can sort of say I have a good idea. The great thing is if it works, it works everywhere in the world. And that's the beauty of scale. If it doesn't work, or if it's not big enough, it's really hard to get it off the ground. So for us, I'd say um, creativity and innovation and challenging current thinking is something that we need. We have all the resources to put behind it, but we need great minds to come and give us those great ideas. Yeah, I would, I would definitely suck at that. I think we're at a point in time where we're really thinking about new ways of working, new ways of doing things that you traditionally did on a desk with a computer and a tower underneath the desk. And now you want to be able to do all those things in more mobile form factors in different ways. You still want the power, you still want the capability, you still want the flexibility, but you don't want to have to be tethered to a desk. And so taking, you know, it's hard. We've had people that, you know, and there will always be people that rely on that desk experience to really do a lot of their mission critical work. Mm -hmm. But there's so much that can get done in other ways. And we're really looking at the, uh, and coming up with and hiring people with the, the courage to think differently or the innovation the challenge the way that we've traditionally thought about computing and really think about a more modern way of, of, of work. Yeah, well, and also going, uh, you know, just having been here a year and now, uh, you know, 
the seamlessness of being able to work on my phone, on my Surface, on my desk, because I'm traveling about 50% of the time. So, you know, I'm sitting in an airport. I don't necessarily want to pull out a laptop or a Surface. So I'll be working on my phone. This morning, I was working on an Excel sheet on my phone. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's, that's just another way of, of getting out there and being as productive as possible um, by being able to work on all those devices. And really kind of innovating in the space because you're going to need, you know, it's not ideal to always be typing on your keyboard. There's other interaction models and some of the things we've done with in the new Windows Phone 8.1 with Cortana being able to do things for you. It's not just a information in and back, but it actually can perform tasks and actions. And, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things we can do with new ways of input in order to advance the state of the art in computing. Yeah. Anyone else on that? So the last question um, that I've got, what, what inspires you to wake up every morning and come to work? The people that I work with, yeah. plain and simple. It has nothing to do with money. It's never had anything to do with money. It, it just, when you wake up every day and you get to go to work and you look at the person next to you and you're thinking, I really, I want to work with this person. Mm -hmm. You just want to work with them because you know you're going to be better for it. Mm -hmm. I love every day. I mean, like I said, I've been there almost 25 years. And people say, why are you there for 25 years? You could go do anything you wanted. Because every day when I come to work, I'm challenged by the people that I work with. And for me, that's what work is supposed to be all about. Yeah. Definitely the people and the ability to have impact. Like I'm, you know, in this career talk I was giving you guys, I never thought about a title or a level or any of that. I mean, occasionally, I guess I wonder if I'm going anywhere. But... <laughs> But in general, I, every, every role, everything I picked was because I liked the people and I liked the idea of what was possible and taking that technology and having impact. And the people is the way. I mean, I've moved around in different groups. It's always to work with interesting people and an interesting problem. And that still drives me every day. I'll add to that, too, and say, you know, I definitely agree with people. And you work with smart people who are as committed to you uh, to the success of the product and the company. It's really motivating. And you know you can get anything done with your team. Um, but the other thing that motivates me is, or inspires me is, um, I love solving problems. That's why I became an engineer in the first place. And I had the opportunity every day to solve problems. And that, that keeps me um, inspired. Yeah, you know, I ditto, and I, I laughed because the first time I interviewed with Microsoft, I didn't get the job. And, I, and first of all, I didn't want to I didn't want to work for Microsoft. <laughs> I was no hired at the I, lunch interview. <laughs> <laughs> in office. <laughs> So, I mean, first of all, I didn't want to work for Microsoft because I was a Unix person, and then I, and then, and then they talked me <laughs> in to come interview with them, and then I interviewed, and then, then did they don't want me. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I am not okay with this. Um, but I got hooked on the people during the interview. Mm -hmm. The people were fantastic, but, so I love the people, and that just goes without saying, but what also keeps me here is that I believe in the technology. We have such robust products. And what I really like to do is solve problems. So the fact that I interact with customers every single day with really hard problems that need those problems solved. And I always laugh a little bit. And I hope nobody, none of my bosses are in here, so I think I'm good. But I mean, if we can't, we've got so many different products. If I can't solve, there's always something I can do to help a customer. Mm -hmm. Always. You know, I always say I'm glad I'm not just a, a, you know, one product company, because that one product, it's hard, sometimes you can't compete. I walk in on Microsoft, I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's a CRM problem, that's a SharePoint problem, that's a, okay, well, I'm gonna put all that together. So I love solving problems. I love the fact that we have such a robust platform that we can always help. And just at the end, when you have a, you know, CIO saying, you know, literally the, the lady at New York, Jesse, she just got promoted to see CIO and we were congratulating her. She goes, be clear, I'm only here because you solved a big problem for me and I got all the credit. And that is just awesome to have customers, to say a customer say, you have made a difference in my life. And not only have you made a difference in my life, you made a difference to everybody walking around New York City because it's a safer city. Mm -hmm. And you know, chill bumps, I love it. So it's an awesome company, and that's, you know, it's the people, it's the technology, and it's the ability to solve problems. Yeah, and I think the one thing that was completely shocking to me when, we came, came, when I came over was the sense of philanthropy. I mean, it's, it's wonderful that we're, you know, we're working with customers, we're, you know, helping the economy, we're, we're uh, you know, building business, but 
um, I was just flabbergasted by how much we give back to the community as well. Um, so with that, if anybody doesn't have another comment, I will uh, dismiss you to the chocolate bar. <laughs> it is, it, we, we, Karen and I had it a month ago here, and it's fantastic. <laughs> then I'll close by saying, I'll stand up. Thank you all. Enjoy the chocolate. Appreciate you coming. <laughs>